Oh, we got really lucky. The battery cover here? Oh my God, I don't have an SD card in there. That sucks. Whoa, that would have sucked so bad. Four drones, two different types, two camera drones, two FPV drones, all DJI for this video. And I'm gonna help you decide, are you more of a camera drone person or are you on the fence about getting into the DJI FPV. Now I do have the original DJI FPV and I also have the DJI Avada with me today. I have DJI Mini 2 and the DJI Air 2. All completely great drones and do what they're supposed to do, but you might be sitting at home going, damn, those FPV drones look fun, but is that the right kind of content or right kind of drone for me? So I hope to help you in this video, get a better understanding of what each of these drones really captures and which one might be the right one for you to add to your arsenal. My name is Sean Oz. This is the world of Oz where I help you with drones, action cameras, 360 cameras, and show you how to use them and get out there and create amazing content. So if you're interested in more of that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button and of course leave a comment below. Now this is the DJI Mini 2, the Air 2, the DJI FPV, and the DJI Avada. These two drones are similar in the fact that you have to use goggles to fly them and you can do more acrobatic style stuff. Now if you're looking for highly acrobatic, and fast speeds and high altitudes, you're gonna to wanna to go with the DJI FPV over the Avada. If you're looking at lower, close to objects, still getting some acrobatics, pretty good speeds, then the Avada is gonna open up your world to a lot of stuff that feels less safe with the DJI FPV. Now talking about camera drones, the DJI Mini 2 is the cheapest of the bunch right now even compared to the Mini 3. And it does pretty much almost everything the Mini 3 does without all the autonomous modes, but it's still pretty freaking incredible. The Air 2 holds up wonderfully still. If you wanna spend a little more money, then you might look into the Air 2S, which has a nicer camera on it, but it's pretty much the same drone. The camera drones come with a controller right out of the box, or you can upgrade to a smart controller, which has a built-in screen. Now DJI's FPV line either comes with what I call the dildo stick, which is the motion controller. I'm actually working on a video of my first impressions of this, and I'm gonna do another video later, really diving deep into this because it's actually a lot more incredible than I originally gave it credit for. Or you can get the R C controller, which you can get in a kit with the DJI FPV drone and the version 2 goggles. Now the Avada you can get to work with the version 2 goggles or the version 2 goggles or whatever they're calling these. It's a little confusing because they both are a version 2 of some sort. I just can't remember the phrasing of which one's which. The new goggles have a better screen. They have adjustments in here. So if you wear glasses, the antennas just flip up instead of having these four Little guys, fat straps don't work on the new goggles, but they did at least give you a strap that's comfortable. You've probably seen me fly at this place quite a bit, and I think this is such a good spot to test these. So if we look over here, we have a mountain right there, and we have mountains surrounding us in the back with some power lines, as well as sort of a rocky cliff there, and then of course, the river that goes right through here. And all that gives us a pretty wide variety of terrain to test all these different types of drones in. But I wanna share this footage and talk about it at the end on what I think each drone really excels at for your needs. We're gonna start out with the Mini 2. And with this drone, it has arms that open up that way and the back legs swing out this way. And you have a little gimbal guard to help protect your gimbal because it is a three access gimbal. Now to really fly one of these, you're gonna need a smartphone and the DJI Fly app. The FPV drones, they use the goggles and you still use the Fly app. So to hook up the drone, you just double tap and turn on the controller, open that up, get your phone in place right there, hook up your wire to your phone, you just go ahead and open the fly app. To turn on the drone, there's a button on the bottom. You do the same thing. It's a double tap, one push, then a long hold. And then everything will sync itself together and you're ready to fly. You do need to have it on level ground when you set it up. These rocks here just sort of made my gimbal get stuck. You can see as I turn it, the picture is actually staying pretty still. If I go up and down, same thing. To start the drone, you push your two sticks down and towards the center and we got a rock again. Hand catching and landing comes in handy in these situations because you can do the same thing while it's in your hand. And then just push up. And now your drone's in the air. You can go through and check your modes. We're gonna turn it on video and you see there's not a whole lot of options that are popping up. We're gonna film in 1080, 60. Everything's in auto for this video. Hit record. And now whenever we're flying, it's actually recording. 
you can see as we look at our phone and we fly around, it sees what we're uh, looking at. This drone's really good for assessing like where you are, if you're using it in other videos to sort of show where you're at. So like we can come over here and come in and sort of show where I'm actually at right now. And the gimbal does move up and down. As you can see, I can sort of make the gimbal go down as we're flying around and we're somewhere down there. Gotta watch out for those wires though. Now the Mini 2 is really, really quiet. So if you want a quieter drone, this could be up your alley, especially for the price point. And so just like this, you can see we're sitting down right there. And then you just readjust your gimbal and go in for another shot. Like right now, the sun is at a horrible spot for us. So let's go over this way and we're gonna turn around and I'll show you sort of a little bit more of what this drone excels at. One thing this drone is good at is these top down views like this and just sort of going up and turning and you get this nice slow spin. You can't get this shot at all when you're doing FPV, or at least not this easily, that's for sure. And what I like to do when I'm flying these camera type drones is I just keep the video recording, cut it up after the fact. Let's go over here and capture some of this yellow. Now you can see that I'm about to hit over 400 feet, but I'm still below those mountains. So it's completely legal to do that in this situation. You do have city mode, normal mode, and sports mode on the Mini 2. Sports mode turns off sensors, which you don't have any front facing sensors on the Mini 2, but it does make it fly faster. But you do sometimes get a gimbal kind of uh, error where sometimes the gimbal will sort of drop. So I usually don't use it to film. However, sometimes you luck out and so far we are looking out today. You do get a much longer battery life on the Mini 2 and the Air 2 than you do on the FPV type drones. So if you're looking for longer flight time, you already got your answer right there. And you can also angle the gimbal up, although in sports mode, it tends to want to drop back down. And here in the mountains, angling it up actually comes in pretty handy at times. Now, if you're looking for something with a little more power, I'd recommend the Air 2 or Air 2S over the Mini 2, because this is as fast as it can go up and climb this mountain, and I'm just barely able to stay over the tops of the trees. I personally think the Mini 2 camera holds up really well, and the shot that I'm getting now, even though I'm getting some breakup in the actual RC, is a shot that would be really hard to get with an FPV style drone. At the very end, I will combine all this footage into a short like minute or two clip so that it's FPV and camera drone combined. And personally, I think that's the way to go because combining the two is just really awesome. And sadly, we are not gonna be able to get to the top of that rock right there because we are at the maximum altitude that the DJI products let you go, which is 16,000 feet above takeoff spot, which sort of sucks when you live in the mountains. These shots like this, you just can't get them with an FPV drone the same way. So I really personally, I think they complement each other. I also find that these do tend to just make better flying machines for higher up, getting like a general area, mixing in some low ground stuff too, but not quite as much as what you do with the FPV products. Now that the sun has gone down, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over here and you can see that the camera on this thing does not like low light when the sun is like that. So I'm gonna angle it down. We're gonna come over here and get some lower shots to mix in, turn around and bring it back to us so that you can really see the difference between the DJI FPV and this. So we're gonna go right here, bring it down a little, now remember, you have no sensors. So if you happen to run into a tree, that's all on you. But you can still fly these kind of drones lower down and closer to objects. So you can still mix in footage. And hand catching these is pretty easy as well. Now let's go ahead and launch a DJI FPV drone. We'll figure out which one I'm gonna do before the sun is too dark for us to get any good footage. For this flight, I'm gonna go ahead and record with the DJI RC in full manual mode and capture the screen so you can see the difference between how this has horizon lock in it as well as 
uh, Rocksteady, which still lets the banking go. So in a sense, this particular drone can mimic some of the camera drone features. Double tap to start it. And there we go. That had a little interference with the prop. That's why it had such a bad start. Now we are controlling it. So if I go left on the stick like that, it'll just stay left like that until I counter steer it and straighten it out. Same with everything else. If I go up, it'll just keep going up. If I go down, it'll keep going down. If I want to turn it to the left, it'll just do a complete circle. And so you have to be able to correct that. Unless you're flying it in sports mode or in normal mode. Well, here's that same shot going through the river. As you can see, my goggles, it just makes it so much easier to see what I'm doing and get close to things than what it is in the other drone. And you can do it a lot faster too. But it's also just so much more fun to fly. Now we're gonna go ahead and fly over these yellow trees over here and try to get a totally different kind of shot than what we just did with the other drone and let you see the difference. So we're gonna head right up to that same rock where we got capped out with the other drone. You can see how much faster it gets over there though. And the DJI FPV is even faster than this one. Now this one relies on electronic image stabilization compared to the camera drones which use the three axis gimbals. And this is the kind of shot you just cannot get with a camera drone. That dive bombing kind of thing. It's just really not possible. You can try to mimic it, but it's just not the same. Because I can angle this drone to pretty much go straight up and down and straight left and right, however I need it to be. For some reason, this one's letting us go all the way to the top with the other camera maxed out. And now we are at the top and that sort of sucks because it kicks it into normal mode. And now we should be able to switch it back into manual. And switch. Which is gonna let us just sort of dive bomb all these yellow leaves on the way back to home. And I'm losing signal. Oh, thank God. Woo, that would have been a hike. And you can just throw it into normal. It goes into hover and you bring it right in. Oh, we got really lucky. The battery cover here. Oh my God, I don't have an SD card in there. That sucks. Luckily we didn't lose the drone. Whoa, that would have sucked so bad. Holy crap, that could have been so bad. I'm gonna get one more flight in. I put Horizon Lock or Horizon Steady on, and I want you guys to sort of see how the image stabilization of this lock everything in place. Now you can also take off in normal mode by putting the sticks together and going up. And fly it around in normal mode. Real quick, you can notice as I just fly it through these trees, you're gonna see that the uh, finished product is actually ridiculously stable. And it flies right now just like the Mini 2, except in the goggles, I still see it bank. However, what you're seeing on the finished version is perfectly stable footage that looks just like you're flying a regular drone. You can just let it hover. You can bring it back through here and just follow the stream. In mid-flight, you can go up and uh, switch it over into acro or manual mode, which we'll do right when we get across the street here. Click that down, you line up the sticks, 
And now we're manual. Man, that looks so yellow. And you can just see, like compared to the goggle view, how stable this really is. We're gonna try to mimic some of the same flights that we just did. And you'll see how stable it is. Now, I think personally, when you're doing dives and things like that, Rock Steady is better than the Horizon Lock. But you tell me, what do you think? Now, as you can see, my flight time is definitely substantially less with this drone than the uh, DJI Mini or what I get with the Air 2S. I also pay a lot more attention and talk a lot less while I'm flying this drone because I, I need to really pay attention to what I'm doing on this one because one minor mistake and I'm hiking for a long time and that would really suck. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and put these away, pack up, go to the house, edit this footage, and then get back with you in just a second and tell you my final thoughts. And then I'm gonna share a beautiful clip of all this footage edited together. Let's go back to the house now. Now, if you've made it this far, you are really debating whether you just want a camera drone or an FPV drone. And hopefully this video has showcased the two different drones and sort of how they fly. Personally, I think the DJI Avada is my now favorite drone that DJI has ever made. It not only captures incredibly stabilized footage that you can lock the horizon in, but it's actually brought back the fun into flying drones for me. Now the cool thing with that particular drone you don't have to be able to fly an acro or manual to really enjoy it. I did a video showcasing my first impressions of using the dildo stick or the motion controller, and I gotta say I was pleasantly impressed. I think either which way you go, it's a fun hobby to get into, and you're gonna be happy with whatever choice you made. If you want more speed and a little bit more acrobatic flying, then go with one of the FPV products. If you don't wanna have to pay as much attention, and you want that longer battery life, and just more casual flying then go with one of the camera drones and whichever one you choose I do have videos all over this channel that might help you become more comfortable and a better pilot or operator of that particular drone hopefully this video helped you out and if so you know what to do leave a comment below and click that thumbs up button because I'll be seeing you in the next video